Hey guys, it's Z again, and um, I'm going to finish up this build discussion with this part. I want to try and keep this as short as possible, at least halfway as, at least halfway, um, half as much as the other video. That was kind of too long, but um, anyway, uh, this is my third take, so um, I'm going to see how short I can keep this. But uh, why do I have uh, the old Gundam out next to the age one? completed age well sort of completed this is completely out of the box again no stickers no paint no panel lines completely straight out of the box um, and I want you guys to appreciate what he looks like um, and that's how he's gonna look like in the review anyway uh, the old Gundam is out here because of a few reasons one because I think it's the one of the best candidates to do a compare and contrasting with the newer age one model kit age one normal um, these two are really not that dissimilar from each other at all uh, from the way it's built from the way they look uh, from from how poseable they are these two make a really good pair and text message okay and not only that but they look amazing next to each other um, but anyway setting that aside for now um, I'm gonna go ahead and just start talking about uh, the H1 and some other things that really that really stood out in the build um, in the last video, I had his upper torso, uh, arms, uh, and that's pretty much it. Arms, rifle, shield. Um, shoot, where am I? Okay, his legs. Uh, nothing too spectacular about the legs that really stood out. Uh, I mean, you got your simple, um, you got your simple uh, peg, and you got, you got your simple peg into a polycap joint, which is the best type of uh, leg joint you can get. In my opinion, you just get way more mobility than just a ball joint. I hope they do away with the whole ball joint thing um, with other with future model kits. Um, but you know, we'll see. It's probably not likely when it comes to high grade Universal Century kits. But um, at, uh, let's at least hope they have like a, a separate waist joint, like with these guys. Um, the legs, the thighs are fine. Whatever the the lower half of the legs were, nothing really stood out there. Very simple. Um, you got your separate ankle, separate ankle armor joint, which is very much like the old Gundams and how that's and that and how that was constructed. So I appreciate that. The thing about these kind of joints is that they're they're a hit or miss. They either work for you or they don't. You either like them or you don't. Um, you know, or or they or they you know or they work or they don't for me uh, I like them I personally do I prefer that because it really helps with the with the kind of posability you can get out of the out of the uh, the feet and ankles um, and the way that the the ankles are made uh, or how they are constructed rather you got a polycap up here and the gray piece that this that the ankle arm is attached to has a peg and then down there is a ball joint so you got your ball joint in the foot and you also have the peg that um, not only swivels um, but also swings forward and backwards so you have what a, a three four maybe a five um, most likely four but I'm just gonna say a three four five axis um, ankle joint and that really really helps with posability so I really do like that part of uh, the legs um, the head was really interesting actually it wasn't your tip it wasn't like old Gundam where it was two halves and then you got your face plate and got your red piece for the eyes and chin and the and the uh, sensors uh, and then you also have the separate uh, red piece and the white piece for the v-fin um, for the age one it was a little bit different you got two halves of the head front and back you got a face plate you got a red piece for the chin and the uh, the underlining for the eyes and then you have the gray piece for the uh, the head details and for the eyes. So um, that's and that's one separate piece. So what you do is you put the face plate and the red piece together, slide it into the front half of the front half of the head, not the face, but the head. Uh, then you you peg in the back half of the head. Then what you're going to do is you're going to slide the gray piece down. The eyes are going to line up with the red piece, so you'd have the uh, the red underlining along with the eyes, so you can actually paint the eyes too. Um, and then the front part of the forehead, which is where the V fin is, or rather the front spoiler looks more like rather than the V fin, um, that keeps you slide that one on and that holds everything into place. Now painting the A on the sensor can be a little bit hard because it's it's just such a really tiny uh, channel in there. Um, I think for me I might cheat and use this and use the sticker for that. We'll see because the detailing is just so tight and um, I, don't know, I might get a little too lazy. Uh, so I might end up using the sticker for the forehead sensor at least 
uh, but everything else that everything else that should have been a sticker I will try and paint um, the legs do look really naked without the black detailing on the on the knees so good job on the designers uh, part for um, good job on the designers part for um, wanting to add a little bit of coloration there uh, so that the uh, the leg it doesn't look too you know monotonous uh, kind of like with O Gundam here it would have been you know plain it could have been plain but you have that extra bit of detail there it might not be on the knees exactly but just that little bit of coloration helps a little bit um, so yeah cool um, really really did enjoy the build um, just just to keep it simple I, I absolutely enjoyed the build from beginning to end uh, I still have more to do I still have things to paint so um, I'm gonna see if I can continue that level of enjoyment now why I have old Gundam up here aside for comparison aside for making them aside from making these two guys look good together um i mentioned in the last video that uh you know his his waist or his pelvis joint was something that you know i haven't it's not something that i've never seen before but i pointed out that it was only on the nobel gundam at the time i was completely wrong there's a uh, uh a follower of mine on youtube i'm probably gonna butcher his name right now but um let me find him real quick but I, i'm all right i'm it's taking a while but i'm not gonna I'm not gonna say his name. He knows who he is. He's given me so far one of the, so far some of the best and informative um, comments on my videos very recently. And he pointed out that uh, this high grade Cerevi from uh, the high grade Gundam Double O line actually had that, um, you know, f uh, two axis swivel joint. Uh, and then I, I, after he said that, I checked, and he was right, of course. Um, was seek. C. Kai Sidek, I think is what's his name. I'm not sure. Sorry about that. But anyway, um, he pointed out the two axis swivel that that high grade Cerevi had. I checked, and he was right. Uh, and after that, I checked other high grades from the Double O line, O Gundam, and then Double O. They both have it. So does Caradim, not Arios, because it's a, they have a different um, pelvis joint, leg peg waist joint, whatever. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to point that out. Kind of a little bit of a correction there. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. That's that's pretty much it. So uh, I again, I, I really enjoyed the build. Um, hopefully, I can continue that level of enjoyment when I um, after I review the guy and and get to painting him. Um, these two look really great. I can't get over it. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's it for this video. I, I think so. I'll, I'll see you guys in the review of the high grade H1 normal. Thanks for watching.